Casey, welcome to Halloween Daily. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. I'm super excited because this is an exciting time to, to be a Terrifier fan and an Art the Clown fan as we're as we're talking, as we're recording this. It's Tuesday, Terrifier Tuesday, as we like to call it around here. Yes. And um, it's after this really unprecedented, successful uh, opening th weekend in theaters for Terrifier 2. And um, so congratulations, first of all, on that uh, to you and to everybody involved in the film. We love it and, and we love seeing uh, the response it, it got yeah. this uh, this weekend. Thank you, yeah, thank you so much. It's really exciting. I'm, I mean, we're all blown away. I, yeah, I wasn't expecting it. I didn't even know the film might go to theaters and so it's all very exciting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, before we talk about Terrifier and Art the Clown and, and uh, we, we always like being Halloween Daily News, you know, we are here talking about a Halloween movie and it's October, it's Halloween season. Um, yes. So we always like to, to ask if it's okay, a few questions about the Halloween holiday itself. And so I'm just always curious, do you do Halloween? Do you look forward to it? And do you have <laughs> fond memories growing up of celebrating Halloween? I do. Um, so I do celebrate Halloween. I love Halloween. Um, I and the funny thing is, is my brother's birthday and two of my really close friends' birthdays are October 30th. So um, and then my birthday's in December. So Halloween was always kind of my brother's holiday. And then Christmas, we celebrate Christmas. And so Christmas was kind of my holiday. But um, so for Halloween, though, um, every year, I just remember you know, whenever we would have a family party, there's this one year in particular, I used to make my cousins make movies all the time, and I would take my parents' camcorder. And so one time when we were celebrating my brother's birthday, right around Halloween, I made us all make a scary film. I was like, we're gonna make a horror movie. And it was like, my cousin and I were like, 10 and seven, I don't know, the two girls and the two boys. And we're like, my car broke down with like a shot to this like toy car on the driveway. And then our brothers were just like, come inside. And they did this like really creepy, like Gollum-esque thing. Mm -hmm. And we just like made a whole movie about it. And um, I think about that um, <laughs> a lot, mm -hmm. how much my brother put up with me um, being like, I'm going to, we're going to make a movie for your birthday. And he's like, okay, fine. Um, but yeah, no, it was always fun. We always were watching. Um, for one of my friend's birthdays, we always used to go and see the Saw movies every year. Yeah. Um, so it was just, I, yeah, I remember it was a really fun, it was always really fun because we also had birthdays to celebrate. So we made it, yeah, we made it fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And, um, and, and I understand about uh, my birthday's in December too. So I, I understand, uh, but I don't know, maybe that was why I've, I've gravitated more to, to Halloween. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. But, um, <laughs> but, um, but, but I hear you there with uh, uh, the this Christmas birthdays. Um, so, and we always have to ask as well on Halloween, the holiday is, mm -hmm. um, what was your favorite Halloween costume that you've worn and your favorite Halloween candy? Uh, of course. Um, I think I was, I'm thinking about costumes that I've had. I, I mean, in the past couple years, I think one costume that I thought I'm a, I'm totally a makeshift person. I'm like, okay, let me look in my closet and see what I can come up with. Um, and I did, um, a couple of years ago, I did Winona Ryder's character at the end of Heather's, um, oh. where she walks out and she's, you know, after the explosion has blood all oh, over yeah. her face and just mm -hmm. covered in dirt. And so wearing like a t-shirt and like her school skirt. So I did that and I had a lot of fun with that because I don't, you know, Everyone on Halloween, they're always like, oh, my God, let me be, like, cute and sexy. And I mm -hmm. show up and I have, like, blood all over me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I'm going all out. And then last year, I was, like, a dead zombie cheerleader. So that was fun. Um, but I like, yeah, I like the I like the fun costumes. And I like doing, like, quirky costumes sometimes as well. So I don't know. Yeah. I like to have fun with it. And my favorite candy. Mm -hmm. Um. I love chocolate. So I really, I'm a chocolate person. And so I really, I would say Snickers is mm -hmm. probably my favorite. 
it's funny because my brother's not a chocolate person. So every Halloween, he'd give me all of his chocolate and then he'd just like pick and choose what, <laughs> what he wanted to trade candy with. So he'd be like, I'm going to take this and this. He'd take like the Sour Patch Kids and like the Red Hots or mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but yeah, definitely, I would say Snickers. Nice. Yeah. You can't go wrong with a Snickers. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's yeah, I it. That. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a classic. Um, mm -hmm. So I, w I was going to ask when you got into acting, and it sounds like, though, with, with making that early horror movie <laughs> uh, for Halloween, it, it sounds like a bit of uh, foreshadowing of, of where things would go down <laughs> the road even, even then. So is, is that have you always been interested in acting or performing? Yeah, I, I really have. Um, I never really thought of another career path for myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, I started, I started performing when I was three and I started, I was a dancer. And so my, I mean, my parents signed me up for dance classes. And so I've basically been on stage since I was three, mm -hmm. um, starting out with dance at first. And then, but I always really loved, like loved movies. Mm -hmm. um, and I, my first, I remember my first favorite movie was Harriet the Spy with Michelle Trachtenberg mm -hmm. and Rosie O'Donnell. And um, I loved her character so much. I'm also a writer and I always used to write when I was a kid, I would write scripts all the time and like invite my friends over and be yeah. like, hey, we're gonna do a thing. And they're like, all right, mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, whatever, Casey. Um, and so Harriet, this, Harriet is a writer, you know, and she's writing in her journal all the time. And I envied her so much that I was five, I think I was five years old. And I would, I put, I like got a spy outfit figured out a spy outfit from my closet and would walk around the neighborhood just like spying on neighbors and just like writing like today she's gardening like omg and my mom would be like so what's everyone up to today um and and then I started finally doing theater and really performing on stage as an actor uh, um, outside of my dancing when I was 11 um so I and I just loved it and it was Really, the theater felt like my second home growing up. Yeah. Um, I loved my dance studio, and that was like my first home away from home. And then when I got into theater and sort of created that family of people there, um, it was just really special, and it was a really great way. I It was every Thursday, and I looked forward to Thursdays. It was my favorite day of the week because I got to go to theater that day. And I loved, I still loved dancing, but theater was like, I don't know, it felt safer. It felt, mm -hmm. it was a safe space. It felt, you know, all these, I don't know, it, just, it was just really, really nice. So I loved that. So that's, and then, um, but I always loved film. And so I actually studied film in college so that I could also write and mm -hmm. try to produce and things like that. So <laughs> it's always sort of been the thing that I yeah, that I knew I needed to do. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it does sound like it's a, it's all been been pointing this way, and and but that's wild that a lot of it comes from your writing as well, and and your interest in that, and um, kind of creating from from the source. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, are you a horror fan? First of all, I guess I, I would ask. I am a horror fan. I really am. Um, I. It's, I geek out over a few things, but mm -hmm. uh, like film wise, like I'm just, I'm like a film nerd in general, yeah. I think. So, um, so, but I, I've always loved horror films. Um, I used to, I remember when I, I think I was in middle school, I got home from dance class one day and I was like, I'm going to watch The Grudge tonight. And mm -hmm. I watched it by myself, like in, like, I just stayed up and like sat in front of the TV and watched The Grudge by myself. And then the next morning, my brother came up to me and like did the like, uh, like the, you know, mm, yeah. and I like, <laughs> I just like smacked him. And um, I was like, don't do that. But I loved it. And one thing that I noticed, like going, moving forward after, you know, I first really, like when I started just loving horror films was I loved to challenge horror films to scare me and I still do like to mm -hmm. this day I'm like all right challenge on mm -hmm. let's go like so I like to um I don't know I've so I've always I, and I think there's obviously this like escapism this like this element of 
um, it's so far from our real lives, but it's yeah. so exciting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's so like, it's so fascinating to just be, to just th these worlds that get created, but also a lot of it is based off of, you know, some of it is based off of real things. Like I've seen horror films that are based off of legitimate horror stories yeah. <laughs> and you know those ex obviously those exist and i just i don't know i have this fascination with ghosts spirits i should say i should really mm -hmm. say spirit um i have this i love that and i love ghost stories and i love like haunted, like really i like really being scared for some reason i love to be scared mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, there's like a thrill to it you know yeah so i've always loved that I, and i same with haunted houses i'm like scare me I challenge mm -hmm. you. Let's mm -hmm. go. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, I just love that. Mm -hmm. Well, we can we can relate. We, yeah, it's like getting on the roller coaster. You know, kind of, yes. kind of an element of pushing yourself and and seeing can I can I uh, push myself to to this next level. Exactly. It's yeah, same thing. Yeah, same thrill. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, um, before I'm wondering before you um worked on Terrifier 2, had you seen or, or were you at all aware of the first Terrifier film or Art the Clown at all? So I hate to say this, but That's I wasn't. Okay. I mm -hmm. was not. And I, I like, I wish I was. I wish I had been aware of it, but I also am really glad that I hadn't seen it before right. I auditioned. Um, so yeah, because when I got the audition for it, um, a friend of mine, I, it was really funny the way this happened because a friend mm -hmm. of mine who's also an actor had been in a film that had the same title as a film that Sam Scafidi had been in. And um, I was like, did you work with her? Because she's she was in the first movie of this film I'm auditioning for because I researched the films mm -hmm. that I auditioned for. So I had seen the trailer, but not the actual film. Okay. And then um, he was like, no, that must be a different movie with the same name, but you're auditioning for Terrifier. And he had seen Terrifier. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, that's wild. Like, I saw it on Netflix. Like, and mm -hmm. he got, like, so excited and amped about it. And, um, but, yeah, I'm glad that I, I hadn't seen it just because I didn't, you know, you never want to, you want to give your own performance and you don't want sure. too much outside influence to put you in your head while you're auditioning or acting or anything like that. So, um but yeah, I definitely watched it after, um, I think it was, I can't remember if it was after my final callback or after I booked it, but I remember when I watched it and I really liked it. Mm -hmm. I really did. And I, got, it made me more excited because I was yeah. like, this is really well done. And mm -hmm. I really liked the script that we were auditioning with anyway. And I, you know, but I, it got more excited after I saw it. So yeah. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. And and it is, you know, it's it's still a relatively new film, the first Terrifier, but it did build a, a very, you know, loyal and rabid fan base really quick. And and um I've talked to David and Lauren just recently and um I've I've talked to Damien before about this and, and we all agree a lot of it was when it hit Netflix and it really just kind of um that gave it a much wider exposure. And um, and so anticipation for this sequel for the last few years since it was first announced has been really just you know super high anticipation within the the fan community and and the horror genre community in general. Mm -hmm. And so now now the the film it, it you're coming into it and I'm curious did Damien give you any um, heads up or indication that your big sequence is probably going to be like one of the, if not the most talked about scenes that, that people are going to be talking about in this movie. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking about like in the, in Terrifier, the hacksaw scene, you know, is one that right. everybody, the first time they see that movie, it's like that scene is, is the one they're talking about when the credits roll usually. Right. And, I, you know, I kind of feel like Allie's big encounter with art is, um, you know, it, it certainly kind of rivals that in, in some respects, um, if not tops it. But um, <laughs> so was there any conversation of like, hey, just so you know, this might be the uh, the moment that really gets everybody talking? Yeah, he definitely mentioned that for sure. Um, mm -hmm. He um, 
Yeah, because when I when I was auditioning, my final callback was essentially a scene from the film where um, it wasn't even my scene. It was a different scene, but it was a scene where a character is scream, you know, screaming and you know, trying like about to be attacked. Yeah. And um, so he just wanted to see, obviously, where I could go with it. And then he he was like, "We're gonna like amp it up, and it will be." Um, you know, he gave me um, Cape Fear, this like the scene, one of the scenes from Cape Fear. And he was like, and then he was like Shelley Duvall in The Shining and mm -hmm. like times, times a thousand, pretty mm -hmm. much. Like, we're going to really amp this up and like it needs to be, it, you know, it, we're going to, yeah. But he, he did mention that it would be the equi the equivalent or like the, scene, the hacksaw scene in this equivalent mm -hmm. to what the hacksaw scene was in the first movie, yeah. right? So, um I was like, all right, here we go. Um, and I hadn't, yeah, I definitely hadn't read that scene first, like before, I don't think he had sent me the full script before he offered me it, of course, because mm -hmm. um, he was keeping everything so close to him, to, so private, of course, mm -hmm. which I don't blame him for at all. Um, and so when I finally read it, um, it was I, I just, I was like, oh my God, this is wild. And then when the, you know, when the mom comes home and it's just like, oh God. Um, but I was really excited. And I was like, this sounds, I don't know, I was excited to to go there because I had never really done a slasher movie before. Mm -hmm. So it was really fun to experience that and to really um, have all those effects and everything. It was yeah, it was wild, but yeah, he did warn me. <laughs> yeah. He did, yeah. And mm -hmm. it certainly is. Um, it, and again, it, we'll, we'll say it in the description. But you know, spoiler warning: if you haven't seen Terrifier two, go watch it and then come watch the rest of this interview. Um, but we're assuming at this point, everybody watching has has seen Terrifier two and and knows mm -hmm. Allie's fate and and her encounter with Arthur Clown. Um. But b before that, you do have some scenes um, with uh, with Lauren as Sienna, and, and yeah. some some more kind of lighthearted type scenes. Um, can can before we get into to the uh, the the big bloody uh, massacre of a scene, um, can you talk a little bit about filming some of those scenes and and working with Lauren? Like I said, we got to get to know her a little bit just a few weeks ago, and um, mm -hmm. she's awesome in the movie and had yeah. great things to say about you and David as well. So um, yeah. um, how was that? It was great. Um, it was so fun. And I think one thing that was really nice was we actually um, we actually filmed the school scene first with me, um, Lauren and Kaylee. Okay. Um, he plays Brooke, of course. And so um, and it was really nice to set that up, you know, to really set up our friendship first. Um, I mean, not just on set, but also in the film. And so it was that was a really nice yeah. intro into the film I think um and then yeah we filmed all those scenes before filming Allie's big death scene mm -hmm. but um and it was it was really it was fun. it was just really nice and it was just really fun and you know we went to uh, like we went we were we went to the uh, on location for everything so that was that was really really fun but it was it was great and like Lauren's great to work with and I think mm -hmm. um yeah, I I just I felt like we the three of us even from the school mm -hmm. scene to then Lauren and I's scenes I felt like we just were able to work pretty well off of each other, um, because we all we all just uh, I mean obviously we all just got along so well so mm -hmm. I, yeah I don't know I have a lot of love for those those girls in my heart so um, I but yeah it was really it was it was fun yeah it was That's good. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, and I love hearing that that there was you know a, a real bond in in real life too, um, mm -hmm. and that you guys were able to to get to know each other, and you were able to do some of that stuff before diving yeah. into the, the the blood and gore. Yeah, um, <laughs> and and you also have a very fun scene with Art that leads into it. It's it's one of my favorite scenes in the film because, like a lot of Terrifier two, I found myself laughing in this nervous laughter because you know Art is. It's so funny, but you just know that he's about to do something horrible. But mm -hmm. it, it was very funny, and I felt like you had some of the funniest lines in the film when when Art is basically coming to trick or treat and and 
when when you're like, oh, I get it, the the mime and blood's a nice touch and all yeah. that. <laughs> um, was all that completely in in the script from the beginning? And um, can you talk a little bit about filming that bit? Yeah, that was in the script. Um, so I think it's. I don't know. Hopefully, it sounded natural enough that it mm -hmm. wasn't improvised. But, <laughs> but no, that was that was definitely that was in the script, and that was a scene that we were really excited to film. And yeah. Damien was excited to um, to use that at least in some sort of teaser, or at least in the trailer or something. Yeah. Um, and I remember him being excited about that. But that was really fun to film, and I, um, yeah, I, that whole that whole sequence, um, there. I don't know, there is something about it and about being able to play off of uh, David as art in the yeah. in the doorway. And um, that was just really, we, we just had a lot of fun with it. And we did like, you know, I, I find it funny that um, I think the take in the film where I do end up throwing the candy, where I finally give him candy, mm -hmm. none of it goes in the bag. Like he used to take where it just all bounced off of mm. the bag instead of going into the bag. And I, <laughs> mm. obviously that would have pissed him off even more. Mm. But, um, but yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. That was a really, that was probably one of my favorite days on set. Um, Cause we just had, and Lauren just, ha Lauren actually was there too. She came to just help out on set. So um, it was, yeah, it was a really good, good day. It was fun. Yeah, it, it is just just kind of a fun scene and funny. And, and again, you know, as a viewer and, and obviously if you're watching Terrifier 2, you've seen Terrifier once, you just know that it's about to go crazy. But it's just this lighthearted moment in a minute. And, and it's tied to Halloween. It's trick or treating. Yeah. It's art just wanting to <laughs> maybe be a trick or treater for a minute there. And um, yeah. it's, it's just and um and the sequel's filled with stuff like that. Just kind of these weird art moments that um I don't think we got as much of in the first film but Damien really kind of gives us a lot more of that here yeah and so then it goes proceeds into like we're talking about this in, incredibly intense graphic um death sequence and I mean it just goes on and on and um and then you think it's over and it's still not over and um and I, we, we talked to David a little bit about this, but from your point of view, I mean, how, how do you even prepare to go into something like that? I mean, you, you've said it, you, it was already like a challenge you were looking forward to, or when the day comes, are you just, you know, yeah. how, how, how do you mentally prepare for that? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. Acting is acting can be so strange and such a strange, and it, it can also be a really hard process to explain um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because it's so internal. Yeah. Um, but I mean, essentially when we were filming that we were up, so we were upstate New York and it was December. It was going to be, I think it was going to be September, like maybe August and then September and then November. And then it was, December um and we're upstate it's very cold it was like 30 degrees or or below I I'm not really sure and we were in in the barn that they had built the set in upstate and um you know there wasn't actual heat we were using um heaters mm -hmm. inside that we would have to turn off because of the noise of course um for the scene and then um so it was very, it was very cold. And I think, but I also think that that helped me um, dive into it mm -hmm. even, even more because it was almost like, um, not that I wanted to like, not that I wanted to rush the scene at all, of course, but I just mean the being cold, it, it helped me sort of dive into that. And, um, and mm -hmm. emotionally, and emotionally, I feel like, um, I mean, I remember I actually remember when we were filming the chase scene, um, we were filming that at a, we filmed the house scene, like the, the first, well, the part in the kitchen mm -hmm. where the glass is broken. We filmed that in a house. Um, that was not their actual door. Um, <laughs> um, and then we filmed the actual bedroom so that we could messy it up on an actual set. So the house scene, I remember, 
when we're, we were doing that and I was going down, creeping, creeping down the stairs, seeing mm -hmm. him in shock and then running up the stairs. When, when we were filming that, after we filmed that, I just started crying. I was just, I was feeling so much. And I had, you know, like when you're like, when you're emotionally prepping for your death, <laughs> um, I just started crying and I, you know, calmed myself down and Amy Russ um, who plays my mom was there and she's also an acting coach so she was just she was helping me calm down a bit mm -hmm. on set which was really sweet and um and she's an amazing actress as well but um and I and so I remember when we were upstate the thing about being upstate I think is that it was less of the like initial fear and like oh my god like uh, but when we were, because when we were at state, that's when the physical, mm -hmm. effect, the physical stuff was happening, and so yeah. that moment was just pure like screaming, yeah, and trying to get away and desperation to get out of there. So it was a, it was much more intense physically, and um, yeah, but I'm like the, I mean the preparation for that is like <laughs> you go into these thoughts of I'm about to die. Mm -hmm. And it's like really, it's, it's, you know, it's acting is crazy, but um, <laughs> uh, you go in your like, but the thing is, is that I think um, knowing there's, all, but there's also always this awareness that it's not actually happening and that it's not real. Yeah. Um, and that's why I say, thank goodness, David's not a method actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, like, who knows what would have happened if we had, then if someone playing a serial killer were an actual method actor, that would scare mm. me. I don't know. But like, so that it was like nice because in between takes, it was like, okay, let's calm down. Let's check in. And David and Damien were just like, good, we're good. And we're like, mm. yeah, everything's fine. So like, um, we're safe. So there's this element of knowing it's not actually happening, but then, you know, you've done the emotional prep of, okay, this is, you know, emotional prep of like, okay, this is the scary moment now. And we're just going to like desperately try to get out and just scream and do like, so it was just a lot of, it was just a lot of screaming, <laughs> of course. But, um, but yeah, you kind of go to these places, but the luck, the great thing about um, being, working with people that you feel safe with is knowing that you can go in and out of it. And, um, and yeah, yeah. And you'll be, you'll be okay. Yeah. So it was a wild experience and I probably blacked out for part of it. So I'm like really? trying to remember all of it, but um, like sometimes when you do a lot of emotional work, mm -hmm. you're just like, I have no idea what I just did, but hopefully that was good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, but it was, um, but we, I mean, we also like had a lot of fun upstate filming that because it was five days of or and effects and wow. um yeah it was five days of that and each day we added new effects and we we just continued so we filmed that in order um okay. we filmed that part in order so that each day we, um Damien was adding more effects until we got to the very end and um it was it was a ride but it was it was a lot of fun like as wild as it was, like a lot of people ask me, they're like, oh, is it scary to do horror films? And I'm like, I think it would only be scary if you were working with scary people. Yeah. <laughs> like if yeah. you were working in an environment where you didn't feel safe, right. but I never felt that. And I was never scared of Dave, you know, like I do think David, seeing him in costume the day we were doing like the chasing scene, Yeah, we already filmed the door scene and we'd already mm -hmm. filmed the Halloween store so I'd already seen him in costume but um but when he's actually like when yeah in those moments it was but I was never scared of him I always knew that he wasn't you know he, like I always mm -hmm. you, know, you, you like, I don't know like at the same time I wasn't scared and I felt like I was in a safe environment to go to these places and um emotionally and and that we would all come out just fine <laughs> So yeah. it was, yeah, it was wild, but it was, but we had a lot of fun upstate too. Yeah. So it was good. Five days. Cause I was going to ask how, how long it, it took. And that, 
that that is wild. Five days. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're progressively just covered in more blood and, and prosthetics and, and just everything. Yes. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was, <laughs> I just, yeah. So each, yeah, obviously. So each day we were like adding more, we did the yeah. eye first and then progressively, um, we're just adding more. And then I remember, um, I remember getting to the, um, actually David remembers this better than I do probably because I was like in this crazy emotional yeah. state, but, um, I remember when we were doing the arm thing. So that was yeah. an actual prosthetic that he attached that Damien attached to me. And then he like, I just like had my arm behind me and was crawling on the floor and Damien or David remembers me getting stuck to the floor. Cause there's so much blood. <laughs> I was just like, I remember trying to get wow. up and just being like, ah, well, I'm like, you know, just going to pull the carpet off of me. Um, but uh, but no, it was it was a lot of fun though, and I think um, it was never like nothing I've ever done before as an mm -hmm. actor. So that was exciting to me as well. So, um, but yeah, five days of of that. And by the time we got to the end, <laughs> it was like it was just wild. It was like there's so much happening, and it's just like beyond. I don't know. So it got bigger and bigger each day, and um, it was yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> Oh yeah, and and again, it's it's the scene. I mean, we're we hearing reports online that people at some of these screenings, some people are fainting, some people are vomiting, um, and I, I don't know. There's a lot of lot of scenes that might cause that, but I got a feeling this this might be um, one <laughs> of the ones that's causing a lot of that um, in a good way. I, I mean that in the best, yeah. uh, most complimentary way because that's what what you know these films i mean that hacksaw scene is is already it's not even that old like i said but it's kind of legendary in its own right already and um yeah so so to already have have this new kind of uh again i i, I hesitate even to compare them because it is quite different but um it definitely is this film's kind of um signature art moment and there are a lot in here too but um it's it, it's so intense and i think it's also damien's um style of just he, he doesn't cut away you know when when mm -hmm. so many at least american directors would normally cut away he stays right on it and um yeah. <laughs> and, and when you talk about the the you know just it being a lot of screaming i mean ali i mean obviously she's like in, in shock it's just reactions going on and everything kind of just on automatic you you would think but to have to get back up to that level. And and David even mentioned this to you. He was like, well, he said that he had it easy compared to you because <laughs> you had to do all the screaming. You had to be, uh -huh. you know, I mean, he was there with it all, but it was like, you had to get back up to that level of that, that just frantic mm -hmm. um, fear. And, and now to hear that it was five days in a row, that, that is just, um, yeah. I can't even imagine. But um, but you said it actually helped to be able to come down in between, and and then it made it easier to to jump mm -hmm. back in, I guess. Yeah, and I will say, for me, um, so yeah, so in between every take, I would have little like huddle huddle in front of one of the heaters, <laughs> yeah. and then we and then you'd be like action, like and I would just like like breathe, like mm -hmm. okay, brace myself, and then we would just go into it. And, um, and I remember, oh gosh, I was just going to say something, but here's what I was going to say is that when I was a kid and I started acting when I was 11, um, I was really quiet, really reserved kid. And I'm still like kind of a quiet person. I don't like to use the word shy necessarily, but I'm just a bit more quiet and reserved. And so people never expect this kind of thing from me. Um, and I had to, I always knew I wanted to act. And so I had to teach myself when I was a kid how to overcome that fear of, you know, doing something so big in front of people. Mm -hmm. um, because I was like, I want to do this and I can do this. And I believed in myself and I was like, I know I can do this, but I really had to overcome that. And that's also why I wasn't expecting 
in my life to do thrillers and horror films. And I've, that's what I've been doing recently. I was like, I'll just do like quiet indie dramedies for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think I, I ended up kind of teaching myself that it was um, once you just go for it, once you allow yourself to go to these places, it just, it feels so relieving afterwards and so liberating as well. And there's a quote by a Chicago act actress um, who she does like Broadway and like TV and stuff. And she's like on Chicago PD. I don't know. Amy Morton is her name. But there's this quote, and I'm going to paraphrase it. But she says um, that acting gives you the license to do anything, to, to, to you know, kill, hate, um, you know, love just feel ultimate joy it allows you to do all of these things uh without any consequences you have the license to do this and to get up there and do things that people would probably love to to do you know whether it's like screaming your brains out or mm -hmm. you know really telling someone off or whatever that is you get to do it without any consequences like mm -hmm. you're going to be okay afterwards and so to never do anything in a mediocre way Mm -hmm. um as an actor to let the audience live vicariously through you um in that way and so i i think about this and i think about um just i how i i taught myself to just i was like just dive in and it's going to feel so good afterwards yeah. um but it was really scary at first because i i was always so nervous to do things like crazy things like that in front of an audience and then once the more I, I, you know, got on stage and the more I, I got comfortable with it, I just, um, you know, I just allowed my, you just allow yourself to go to these places. And um, again, there are no consequences. Mm -hmm. So the consequences that you, you did a thing and you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, it's like you, you, you did that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that I think I, so I was thinking, so that is sort of how I approach this scene is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> yeah. So that was how I really approached this scene is I was like, I'm going to, we just have to dive right in. We have to do mm -hmm. this. And this is going to, and I, of course, wanted to do the scene justice. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to, and I wasn't scared of the scene, but I didn't want it, you know, I wanted it to be, um, like, I, I wanted it to be effective. And Damien did, and we all did. We all wanted the scene to be as effective as possible. And so I was like, I just, I'm going to dive right in. Here we go. So it'd be like in front of a heater and then brace myself and then <laughs> right go all out. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that's sort of where my mind was at the time, where how my mindset wasn't when I approached these things. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it, it's definitely, now the, the um, premiere just before it opened in theaters, there was the premiere in New York, um, and and you were there, right? I at, was at the big uh, premiere event. Yeah. <laughs> had you seen the film before? Was that your first time seeing the, the the finished film? So I had seen it. I went to Austin with them as well. Oh, okay. So you were at the Austin screen. Awesome. Yeah, and that was so. That was the first. What time was I that seen. like? The first time watching that it, and with an audience, no less. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I was sitting next to. Uh, Sarah Voigt, who plays Barb, oh, and, nice. um, <laughs> and we're sitting there, and after my scene, so during my scene, Sarah's just like, what, what, like, she, like, when I'm, like, cringing, like, oh, my God, what's happening to me, and then Sarah's like, what is happening, like, oh, my God, and she's like, this is insane, this is wild, and then after the scene, she just, the theater's quiet, <laughs> and she just goes, she leans over, and she's like, to Damien, she's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like so funny yeah um but it was really cool to like see people reacting to it and um it was and and I I actually I think after the New York premiere after that scene people like applauded and I was like either I, I was like yes yeah, thinking about but I was also thinking about it as if like are you happy I'm dead no but <laughs> They were like applauding the scene and they were right. applauding like, the, 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 the whole um, execution of it, which, um, and I think 
I, that may have happened in Austin. I may have blocked that out. I'm not really sure. But um, I definitely remember it at the New York screening that people applauded. There were a few times during the whole film that people would just would start applauding. Wow. And it was like with Sienna, um, mm -hmm. with, uh, I don't know, something with, with art, I think. But um, there were like a few times where people would applaud, like, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah that to see people reacting and well also really rooting for sienna but also really reacting to all these other mm -hmm. uh, other crazy things happening as well so that was that was cool to be in a theater with with people who hadn't worked on it so i think mm -hmm. that's yeah yeah so that was cool mm -hmm. and so that was your your first taste or your first couple of tastes of of actual audience fan reactions and yeah. wow to hear that that they were applauding after that scene i'm because that doesn't really happen in, in movie theaters nowadays um yeah at least not very often um right. so and they have multiple points where, where they're doing that and like you said really appreciating the artistry of it um and and beauty uh, the beauty of it is, is a weird word but it is you know that is what it is it's it's, it's um grotesque beauty if, if that uh, makes sense I guess I don't know yeah. but it's it's um disturbing beautiful nightmares it's uh what whatever the adjectives are it definitely stays with you and um and that's obviously what Damien was going for and and I think they uh the yeah. whole team knocked it out of the park and it is that that you know that frantic um performance that um we're watching that really just keeps us in it um capped off by that just haunting mom at the end um you know walking in and, and see and uh it's just unbelievable um yeah. <laughs> thank you honestly thank you I'm, I'm honestly just glad people like it you know and I'm glad that people also um this is gonna like buy it in a way like that mm -hmm. they are like I like, and I, like, I've had some people say like, "Oh, I didn't want you to die," or like, mm -hmm. "That was wild." Like, like that was like mm -hmm. you, like you had to go through so much. And um, I, I'm just really glad people liked it. Like, mm -hmm. that's the thing is because you never want these things to be like cheesy. You never want them to feel. Um, I don't know, like. Exactly how I, when I was younger, how I was like, I, I challenge you to scare me. I challenge mm -hmm. you to scare me right now. Um, I think that that is like, it comes with the effectiveness and it comes with the believability of what's actually happening and how just believing that it's happening, knowing that it's a movie, but also, so, um, so I, I'm really, I, I do feel really proud of the work that we all did. It was a lot, it was a crazy five days. It was a long five days. Mm -hmm. And it was also during COVID. It was like, um, you know, so it was a smaller crew too. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone um, was physically on set, um, but just because of COVID. But um, yeah, it, I'm just really glad people like it, honestly. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think people are liking it. Um, as we mentioned earlier, as we're recording this, it just had an awesome theatrical opening weekend. Yeah. And like you said, you you didn't even know that it was going to play in theaters initially. I don't think any of us really thought that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that itself was a surprise. It played in a lot of theaters too. Um, yeah. Almost a thousand. Yeah. yeah. And it it made the top ten. It yes. knocked Top Gun out of the top ten. I mean. Yeah. Art, art's the one that took Maverick out. I, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty unprecedented and pretty awesome as as just a horror fan in this yeah. community. And somebody, um, we here at HD, and we've been talking about Art the Clown and Damien since we first saw All Hallows Eve uh, almost a decade ago. And um, we've been supporters and and cheerleaders and fans of the yeah. Terrifier films um this whole way. So to see fans responding the way I did when I first watched it uh, and and was blown away and said my first reaction was well I think that was worth the wait I think I think uh they're gonna get their money's worth um when when they see this um I think Damien yeah. delivered and made it worth everybody's wait um yeah. so to see that I mean the, the the fan reaction is coming in and and people are liking it um that's that's got to feel pretty good. I mean, I'm sure it's just starting to set in. Maybe I mean, again, it's it's literally Tuesday after opening <laughs> weekend. 
Um, and, and it hadn't even hit streaming yet or Blu-ray. All that will come down the road and many, many more people um, will find it just like they did when it hit Netflix. But for that core audience that have been so rabidly, uh, um, uh, ravenously waiting for this sequel, um, yes. it seems to have, to have hit the mark with them. Mm -hmm. So um, that's got to feel pretty good right now. It does. It really does. And I will say, as an indie film, yes, an indie film lover, um, those are the films I go to see in theaters. Are mm -hmm. the indie films? I love supporting indie indie filmmakers and indie the stories that they tell and 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 just where they're able to go with these um, with these stories because you know they're it's really coming from someplace special for these filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So to see that and also to see like an independent film, an independent horror film. Yeah. Knock Top Gun out. That that's wild. That that's just so exciting, I think. And um I yeah, I definitely had no idea it would be in theaters until obviously we knew it would be in theaters. And I just I find yeah, it's it's all very, very exciting. It is it is a bit surreal. Um to have that but I just the best way to see a movie is on big screen you know mm -hmm. so to have it there we were um I mean the theater that we were in in New York um this like the seats were vibrating like you were like I yeah. felt like I was just so in it and there's something so special about that mm -hmm. there's something so special about watching these movies on big screens. And I think that's gotten lost in recent years. And so I'm just really happy that um, these, th that, the, that the horror fans and, and other people who just found the movie were able to see it on a big screen specifically, mm -hmm. because that's a, that is, and that is just a whole different experience than just seeing it on your TV or on your computer. And um, I just, yeah, I try to see, more movies on the big screen now to support indie filmmakers mm -hmm. in that way. But um, I, there, it's, you know, you're in it and you get to, you, you see more, you also notice more like on, on the screen when it's on a big screen too, you notice like little details yeah. are, you know, not as easy to notice, but yeah. So I, yeah, it's a very, it's very special and we're all so blown away and grateful and we've all just been, yeah, I don't know. I, it, it just we're all just very grateful that that people have actually supported the film. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it's it's pretty awesome to see. Like I said, just as a as a as a fan and and, and supporter and somebody who, um, you know, has has gotten to know Damien and David a little bit over the years. Um, and to to really see that response, and I do think, like you said, it's it's inspirational on on the level that you know. Um, this was unrated. I mean, it broke a lot of rules with coming out, you know, un unrated. It's got an almost two and a half hour runtime, which, yeah. you know, slashers don't really typically run that long. Um, mm -hmm. So it's doing a lot of things that you don't normally see. And yet the audience turned out, you know, yeah. the, the people came out um, and, and it's largely word of mouth. I mean, it's not, you're yeah. not, ne there's no ads on network TV this week. You know, that's, it's it's word of mouth. It's it's the mm -hmm. online community, the the fan community. So that's pretty cool, and I think it'll prove to be pretty inspirational down the road to to other filmmakers watching what Damien is doing now, and maybe they'll say, mm -hmm. maybe we don't need what we thought we needed, and, and we just need to, to follow our vision, and and it'll find its audience. Right. Yeah, and it's it's obviously hard. It's so unpredictable. Um, yeah. In indie filmmaking is so unpredictable. You don't always know where it's going to go, how it's going to be received, mm -hmm. of course. But I think, I mean, the biggest thing is just telling, you know, telling the story that you really want to tell and mm -hmm. being able to do that as an independent filmmaker. And so, um, and I feel like those tend to be the films, the ones that where the filmmaker is like, this is coming from me. This is like, mm -hmm. I'm putting my heart and soul into this. This is a story that I need to tell. And those are the ones that I think um, really end up um, finding an audience, you know? And I think whether, and I do think it's probably mostly by word of mouth for the independent film community, but um, it's just, there's something, you can see it in those films and in those stories and the way that they're crafted how much the filmmaker cares about it. And I love that. 
that. So I do really think, obviously, we do know how much Damien cares about Terrifier and about mm -hmm. um, the characters, especially about art and how he's had Sienna on his mind for so long. And so now he's finally able to bring that to life. And I think that's so exciting. It's so exciting. And so um, to see, you know, it is really inspiring too. And I hope other filmmakers do, you know, feel, you know, do feel like they more, I don't know, feel like they can just go out there and yeah. you know, do their thing, tell their stories. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and I've been saying for a while that Art the Clown is, is already a, a horror icon. And I think it's pretty that he's cemented that position now. And I told Lauren this, and uh, I'm telling everybody that, I mean, this character of Sienna and her yeah. portrayal, I mean, this is another, I think, iconic character that is going to be yep. up there with, like, the, the Ellen Ripley's and Laurie Strode's out there. Yep. Can, can you talk just as a... A movie fan just yeah. watching this character um arrive here in pop culture what what yeah. what that means um i i it's so special honestly and it's special to even just be a part of that film mm. but as, as a fan mm. i find it also really interesting that halloween ends is happening and then mm. we have this new final girl yeah. and we're like hey world like it's not over. Um, That's right. The movies aren't over. We'll be fine. Um, right. We have more for you. Um, so I do think that's really exciting. I think the timing is really exciting. Um, and like, not just because of Halloween ends, but also because yeah. we've been in, you know, we've been through so much over these past two years with this yes. pandemic and everything like that. So I think to have this he hero character mm -hmm. is really special right now um, for, for movie lovers and for fans of, of the genre. And, um, and she's so good and she's so badass and I, and she killed it. You know, she, she's just so, um, so strong in that role mm -hmm. that I really admire that about, about Lauren's and the hard work she put into it as well. Um, and but I just think for for fans of film right now to have this hero character just rise up all, all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's just really exciting it really is yeah so I'm really excited to see what might happen next I don't know <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> absolutely yeah fingers crossed Terrifier three we can't wait to see yeah or see in a rematch <laughs> we gotta we gotta see it happen yeah. um. Yeah. Well, I mean, the film, all these films, I mean, they really do have Damien's fingerprints all over it, like you said. I mean, he does so much of them and puts so much of himself in them. Like all of my favorite filmmakers from Romero and Carpenter and, and you know, whoever you're talking about there, it's always like that, it seems like. They've got so much of themselves invested, wearing so many different hats. And, you know, a big part of that when it comes to Terrifier 2, I think history will show will be that, that Ali's death scene and... I mean, I think it's going to make highlight reels down the road. I think it's going to be one of those <laughs> scenes. You know, I mean, have you thought about that? That 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 when they're counting down in, in years down the road, some of these most shocking horror moments or most terrifying horror moments or most glorious horror moments, you know, some of these iconic scenes that they will very well, I think, be including this among them, um, that, that people are going to be talking about this for many years to come. Yeah. Um, honestly, I really haven't thought about that that much. <laughs> um, I think because part of me just like didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Like I was just like, I just hope they like the scene. I hope yeah. it's, you know, it does. We, I hope we do this justice. Um, but yeah, I think I just, um, especially because when I auditioned for Terrify, I didn't I, like everything is sort of go like just building on top of one another where I didn't realize how quite how awesome the fandom was of the first mm -hmm. year fire was I and and then when you learn about that and you're like oh my god there's so much support for this this is amazing um and to really feel like you're part of a film that is so supported by a community already that's that was really wild and special and then someone did a couple people have mentioned that similar thing to me about the scene being included on, you know, like best kill scenes or but mm -hmm. like, you know, 
in horror history. <laughs> like people are like, you're going down in history. I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't know. Like what, what does yeah. that even mean? Um, and I think that there's so many elements of this film that people are, you know, people are talking about it in that way. And um, I am just like, I, I'm just, I'm just, acting like I don't know <laughs> I don't know what I'm like so I had no I don't know I don't think it settled in yeah. I don't think I will believe it until like something like that happens you mm -hmm. know I'm just like it's I did it I, I don't know it's in a movie I don't know I did a thing um just because I've never been a part of something that has reached that level mm -hmm. yet so I think for me I'm so used to doing indie films mm -hmm. and being like yeah, maybe like 10 people will see it like hopefully not 10 people but like mm -hmm. you know I'm just like hopefully there's an audience for this and that's all we hope for when we make these movies yeah. and I think because I've been a part of so many indie films I'm just so used to you know having an audience but having you know but and then moving on and it just sort of being like we did it congrats like and feeling really proud of something that we did and then moving on to the next thing rather than having something sit and be talked about mm -hmm. um, so I just am like I don't I don't know so I think I'll believe it eventually it'll settle in eventually <laughs> when, when, when it's a few decades down the road and and we're talking <laughs> for the 20th anniversary of Terrifier 2 and uh, yeah. we're, we're doing this again then and I'll say remember when uh could, could you imagine <laughs> back then that yeah. may it, uh, that'll probably that'll probably be the way it'll go because uh, yeah. things like that I mean it it you know, it is kind of history in in the making. I think in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, and 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 like, like we've said, seeing that fan support is just unbelievable. Um, yeah. And and again, I mean, congratulations for all of, of the success. I mean, it's been a long wait for fans, mm -hmm. and obviously a long wait for you guys too that made the yeah. the, the movie. I mean, it, it's been a long time coming for this to yeah. to finally um, be unleashed onto the public and see. Everybody responding so well. Um, it's it is really cool to see. Um, yeah. What uh, do you have other upcoming projects that you can um, talk about or, or uh, um, set us up with? Uh, because uh, yeah. I know you're gonna have a lot of fans now that want to see <laughs> what you're doing next and, and yeah. follow your career. Um, yeah, uh, uh, we're among them, obviously. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, I have. A couple of things that I'm like in the works on. Okay. So nothing that is really, um, I think, substantial enough to talk about just yet. Sure. But there are things that are in the works, things that, um, things that I'm writing, things that mm -hmm. I'm trying, I'm help, trying to help produce and uh, like act in as well. Mm -hmm. So um, there are a few things that are like, in the works <laughs> some things that I'm auditioning for too I don't mm -hmm. know but um yeah so but I yeah I don't really want to go into too big of details with the, those projects yet just because we're not in production yet sure. so um but there will be things and I wish I had something like oh I have another movie coming out but one day that will happen <laughs> well we'll we'll have you back on and, and we'll talk about that when, when the yeah. time's right <laughs> Yeah. Um, like I said, you, you've got fans in us. We're going to be um, following your career and um, watching what you do do next because um, mm -hmm. I, I know it's going to be amazing. And um, I know fans that are watching this feel the same way I do that, um, yeah, you have definitely made an impact in this genre and, and in this film. And mm -hmm. um, Allie, you know, uh, RIP Allie, she, yeah. she is, is going to be one of our favorites, I think. Um, and and I, I, I go back to that trick-or-treat scene. I love that, too. Yeah. Um, and, and it's right at the heart of Halloween itself, too. So that's a nice nice touch that I like that um, is in there and that you're a part of that as well. So yeah. um, so this has been amazing. This has been just a pleasure for me to to get to know you and learn a little bit more about where you come from. And um, and um, and now it's it's going to hurt that much more watching um, watching <laughs> Art do what he does to Allie because now I, I feel like... Um, I, I know you a little bit, and it's gonna it's gonna be that much more painful. But uh, yeah, but I guess well, that's a credit you. to all the all the work done. Then yeah, well, thank you so much. It's been so this has been such a pleasure. So thank you. It's been so fun talking with you about this. Um, and I yeah, I just I really appreciate it. So I appreciate the support, and we all do. And it's just been really exciting. So 
Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. And as always, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs>